federal judge today questioning whether the House of Representatives has the right to sue the president at issue a lawsuit challenging President Trump's plans to redirect federal dollars to build a wall on the southern border. Justice Department attorneys arguing for over 200 years, Congress and the executive branch resolve political disputes through uh, political means, not through the courts. Joining me now, Sebastian Gorka, radio host, author, and former strategist to President Trump. Uh, Sebastian, great to see you. Um, Thanks, Rick. So the president, it, it, you know, the president wants to move on an emergency declaration, redirect funds. Congress passed a law a long time ago <laughs> specifically giving him the authority to do that, to redirect funds, according to his discretion. Now they're suing over it. And the judge, of course, correctly, is saying, I'm not sure you can really challenge what the president is doing. What do you make of it? Um, I don't know who this judge is, Greg, but uh, kudos to the judge. I mean, this is yeah. absolutely right. The, the separation of powers is the system the founding fathers created. They didn't say, well, if there's a dispute, just have a federal judge <laughs> trammel in there and make decisions on behalf of either branch. Uh, also, uh, the power of the purse is related to missions, related to objectives. And if you give the president a pot of money to do border security or to fight narco trafficking, at that point, uh, the Congress is supposed to get out of the way of the executive right. and the president gets to spend the money. And if he says, look, there are narco terrorists, there are cartels using the open borders. Well, then I get to use the money you appropriated to me to fight the narco terrorists or the traffickers. So, yeah, I, I think this is the kind of common sense the judge has shown that is far too rare in this city, Greg. Uh, it was, by the way, Trevor McFadden uh, was the judge. He's a uh, Donald Trump appointee um, and a smart guy, I must say, because, I mean, the point he was trying to make is you, Congress, delegated the authority to the president to do this. How can well, you now complain about it? Uh, Greg, the the, let's, talk, let's talk about the original legislation. So, uh, as the judge said, in the 1970s, Congress passed a National Emergencies Act. Right. And there have been dozens and dozens and dozens of national emergencies used. The powers have been vested in the president. He's used them. Obama declared a national emergency, Greg, uh, you know this, over the quality of drinking water in Flint, Michigan. I don't remember the Democrats saying, well, we need to prosecute this in a court because he's right. trampling over the rights of American citizens. There are some of these that have been in place. Some of these extant national security decisions have been in place as emergencies since 1979. Right. Now it's a problem. Greg, it's only a problem because Donald Trump is the president. Well, and Obama declared a national emergency with respect to our relations in Burundi. Um, I, I would challenge most Americans to try to pick out Burundi <laughs> on the world map. Right. Uh, and nobody complained, right? Nobody. So, so now we've got people at the border. And let me just give you a stat. This comes from U.S. Customs and Border Patrol. Um, they detained 109,000 migrants in the month of April alone, the largest since 2007. This is escalating month by month. Can anybody credibly say this is not a national emergency? Greg, I, I, look, when you get the former, when you get Obama's Secretary of Homeland Security, Jay Johnson, go on the record last week saying that this is a national emergency, this is a crisis, I, I think it's game, set, and match. This isn't about solving a problem for the Democrats. This is about stymieing the key issue that built the, the president's campaign platform was built initially on the question of immigration reform and the wall. They know that. They know this is key to his reelection. And also, Greg, let's be honest, it's about votes. It's about right. illegal aliens getting to vote for Democrats as they see it and to recreate a Democrat plantation. It's not with slaves. It's with people who they think are going to be beholden to them because they are illegal aliens. That's why they don't want voter ID. That's why they don't want a wall. This is all about politics. They couldn't care less about the human cost. It is about creating a new political plantation for right. the Democrats. I've got just a minute left, but um, my sense is that DHS is not doing its job. They're slow walking a lot of this stuff. What do you think? 
Uh, the swamp is deep, the swamp is wide, and I have to re remind everybody, two plus years is not a long time in D.C. when it comes to undoing 30 or 40 years of swamp building. The people who, I saw it in the White House, working for the president. I saw people trying to slow roll and sabotage the p president's authority as GS-14s and GS-15s. People who said, I'm an SES, I'm a bureaucrat, presidents come and go, I know better. Right. The deep state is there still and it has to be drained, but it's okay, we've got another six years. <laughs> uh, okay, we'll wait and see about that. Uh, Sebastian Gorka, thank you very Thanks, much. Rich.